a big deal? I didn't know. You know, I haven't been doing so heavyweight title fight for like this for so long, so um, I should have wear some suit. <laughs> it's okay. You look great anyway. Yeah. This fight, I feel like, has been one of your most discussed with the, like with all the the finance stuff, with all the contract stuff. So is it now just a relief to know that in a couple of days you won't have to talk about it and you will finally get to fight? Uh, first of all, I don't, I don't really like to talk about it. So, but yes, it's gonna be a relief, like to get this over. I don't have to talk about it. Is any of that stuff bothering you? Has any of the the, the you know, some of the people, what they've said, or some of the talk about your contract, has it played on your mind during this training camp, or have you been able to push it out and not focus on it? I've been trying, though. <laughs> and then people ask you about it, and then it comes up. I've been trying. Yes, that's exactly what you're doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Before I get here, I wasn't thinking about it until you pick on your mind, so... Well, I apologize for ruining your day. Part of it. <laughs> it. But is it boring? For this fight in particular, because obviously, contract stuff is very controversial with the UFC and you know Fernand's obviously talking a lot is this the most sort of impact you felt from outside of cage stuff for this fight um, no I, I do believe that many people deal with uh, a lot of stuff before fight um, whether it's a contra or a drama stuff or some ex-girlfriend shit you know or ex-wife or I don't know People deal with stuff, so you have to figure out your own shit and do what you have to do. When you see things like the sparring footage being put out there, though, does that not sort of annoy you? Does that not make you think like No, oh. it doesn't annoy me. It's just funny because, first of all, it wasn't a sparring footage. It was a clip of a sparring footage because the sparring footage doesn't look that good. You said in the countdown that you, you knocked Cyril down in sparring. I wanted to clarify, did you knock him down or did you knock him out? Did I say that on countdown? You did say that on countdown. Oh, sorry, I said that. Yes, I knocked him out. You knocked him out? Yeah. With what? Uh, high kick, left high kick. Oh. Is there a, do you think there's no wonder that that footage didn't come out? What do you say? There's, there's a reason why that footage has not come out. Oh, there's a lot of reason why that footage didn't. So does that give you confidence going into this Saturday? Well, uh, let me say this. Um, that knockout wasn't a, um, it wasn't a uh, voluntary knockout. Like, it wasn't inspiring. It was an accident. You know, I didn't intend to knock him out. To knock him out, I didn't go there to knock him out. So uh, personally, it's not something that I, I would be proud of and like walk around and like feel like tough because I knocked my sparring partner out or knock him down or whatever, you know. So usually stuff like that happen in the uh, training, but it's always an uh, accident because uh, we are uh, committed to take care of our partner. Uh, so to, be, to, be, to be clear, it was an accident. Yeah. Okay. Has this lead up made it solidified in your mind that you were right to leave France and that was the best decision for you as a person and as a career. What is it? Was it did all of this stuff with this fight it made it solidified in your mind and cemented that you were right to leave France? No, it didn't cement my man my mind. I knew at that time that it was a time. I was right at that time and I was and I'm still right. And uh, Maybe I was I wasn't right not leaving France before, you know. Yeah. How do you think this fight goes on Saturday? My prediction is a knockout on the two rounds. Do you think whatever happens with the contract with everything, your next fight will be against Tyson Fury, or do you think you could fight someone else first? I don't know, but that's who I want it to be. Thank you. Uh, a lot's been made of Cyril, his, his fast rise, like he, he was relatively new a couple years ago, now he's fighting for the title. Did you think, after meeting him and sparring with him a few times, that he would be this good this quickly in MMA? What do you mean this quickly? Uh, he, I think he was only 3-0 and a couple years ago, and now he's fighting for the UFC heavyweight. Well, I know somebody who, who was in that same position, and he's right here in front of you. So, yes, it's good. When I saw him, I know that he's gonna do he's gonna uh, do good, but that doesn't mean like 
is gonna win. Uh, is gonna win against me. How would you compare his style of striking to Alistair Overeem and Jairzinho from your past fights? Jairzinho is more like stationary fighter, which is like a very different uh, type of fight style stylistically, uh, and he's like very more. Um, mobile as a fighter, which is, which is good, you know, it's good for his style, for his, uh, how he fight, that's how he gets here, and he's still very, he's a different style, style of fighter too, you know, uh, very experienced, uh, and he's still very fight more smart. Francis, I'd like to ask you about your Hollywood career. We finally got to see your scene in the Fast and Furious movie. Can you talk about what it was like to shoot that? And did you actually get to fly out on cables before they blew you up on the computer? Uh, I don't have a Hollywood career. I have an MMA career, and I think that's why we are here right now. Uh, What's happened there, happened there. It was cool to have those experience, but uh, it doesn't make me lose any focus. And then, what's, what is your process during the fight day? Like, are you someone who's going to listen to a lot of music? Do you do a lot of just talking with people? Are you more quiet? What do you imagine the day of the fight will be like? Uh, quiet, listen to music, you know, play by myself. Francis, over here. Um, if you were to leave the UFC, which I hope you don't, who would you be most upset that you didn't get to fight? Hmm. If I was to leave the UFC, I don't know, I haven't think about that question. <laughs> well, Tom Aspinall, good, good one? Huh? Tom Aspinall, maybe? Who? Tom Aspinall. No. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I asked Eric, this, Eric the same question, um, but I want to ask you as well. Out of 10, how much of a reality do you think it is that you will get to fight Tyson Fury? Out of what? Uh, out of 10. Out of 10? Let's say 8. Yeah, very nice. Why not 9? I like it. And would you Just be... Just be conservative. <laughs> Would you be looking to have that fight in four arms gloves? That idea just came out like that. But we, I mean, I'm not thinking about that fight now. But uh, obviously, I think it would be a good a good thing to like bring something new, you know, some crossover thing, something strange, very entertaining. Uh, I think it will make this very special and good. Know, some new fighting style. Awesome, thank you, my friend. You Good to look on set. Thank you. Francis, right, so right here. Right here. Uh, I know this has been a, another long break between fights for you. Uh, what are you most proud of in the last 10 months in terms of your skills where you've grown? Everything, bro. I grow on everything. I don't, uh, I think, I, I don't uh, underestimate anything. I work on everything, you know, show up on wrestling class, uh, jujitsu class, uh, striking, boxing class, sparring day, everything. I think I need all of those, uh, all, of, all of those skills to be a, a good uh, MMA fighter, basically for a champion. You need to be more around. And uh, you came out this week announcing that you're going to be taking part of your purse in uh, crypto. Right? Yeah. Or Bitcoin. Can you just tell us about that in a little bit of details, why you came to that decision? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's an easy one. Um, one year ago, I didn't know much about uh, cryptocurrency, even though people have been talking about uh, Then I have my manager, uh, Martin McCarroll, Ma 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 tell me about that, the NFT stuff. And now I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, you don't just like, trust me, it's going to be like this. Then that's when I started to get educated about uh, NFT and cryptocurrency, you know, because obviously my NFT was launched and some, it was, 
I receive uh, most of the money in uh, Ethereum and uh, I convert some in Bitcoin. That's how I really get into it. And uh, over the past year, I've been learning more and more and I regret that I didn't even know about it earlier. That's why like, I decide uh, from now on, I'll put a lot of my money in that stuff. Been making some, some good money on it. So. <laughs> Francis right here, um, you, you and Cyril, obviously as former teammates, you guys spend a lot of hours, you know, uh, sparring. Spend a lot of hours, as I just said, we still spend a few sections in, the, in three weeks, which, which was maybe six sections of training, definitely less than eight. Uh, that was back in January 2019, because after I fought Curtis Blade in China, I went back in Cameroon, and uh, on Christmas, I had a Ken Velasquez fight. So I couldn't uh, come back in Vegas on time to set up a training camp because the fight was in uh, February the 17th. So uh, I stopped in France and uh, trained there for one month. And at the time, Siri was there training for his fight in a TKO, I, I believe. So he left even before I left. He left, like, I think, two or three weeks before I left to go for his fight. Then after that, uh, by the end, I think it was February 3rd, I flew to Phoenix. Uh, that I was there for two weeks before my fight, you know, and I said, I don't know where you guys came from with all this friendship, but sparring partner. So there's no, uh, based on you saying that, is there no sense of familiarity with Cyril and it doesn't really factor into the matchup for you? Than what I explained to you, there's nothing else. And I want to ask you, and, yeah, and, I, and I do believe that if you ask him those questions, he's going to approve those answers because I think, regardless, uh, he's honest. Thanks, Francis. Francis. Bonjour, Cyril. Bonjour. Francis. Est-ce que pour vous c'est le plus gros combat de votre carrière ou en tout cas le plus dur qui s'annonce? Non, c'est pas le plus gros combat de ma carrière. C'est un combat, je pense que c'est un combat comme comme les autres. Et aussi important comme les autres. Tous les combats sont importants. Un combat, c'est déjà important quand on l'a déjà gagné, mais quand on, euh, quand on s'y prépare, ça reste toujours important, soit le plus important. Vous dites que vous allez gagner en deux rounds par KO. Euh, c'est quoi les clés de ce combat pour vous C'est quoi les clés de ce combat Je pense que. Euh, Il est très important de rester concentré sur l'adversaire, euh, de garder ma tête froide et la tête froide et la tête sur les épaules sur ce combat et mettre en exécution ce que je suis capable de faire. Bien, bien évidemment, être, euh, avoir, euh, prendre connaissance de mes capacités et avoir confiance. D'accord. Euh, il, il y a la brouille avec votre ancien entraîneur, euh, avec les messages que vous envoyez l'un à l'autre. Vous n'avez pas l'impression que ça aille vous détourner de votre objectif qui est combat de Cyril Je sais que c'est ça son intention puisque c'est un man manipulateur de métier. Et, mais le connaissant, euh, je suis capable de combattre ces, ces armes. Euh, c'est un combat qui aussi contribue à la promotion de votre sport, à la fois en France où vous avez vécu et puis au Cameroun. Euh, Est-ce que vous, vous avez ça en tête Est-ce que vous vous dites qu'à chaque fois que vous montez dans l'octogone, euh, c'est une belle pub pour votre sport euh, Oui, je pense que chacun d'entre nous, euh, on, on, on contribue au, au sport en, en combattant, en euh, respectant les règles et en faisant ce qu'il y a à faire. On, on, on contribue au sport et je suis également persuadé que euh, en faisant ce que je fais, je, je contribue au sport, euh, à mon sport, que ce soit en Afrique et en Europe, en France ou en Royaume. Vous, vous pensez qu'un jour il y aura un combat à un combat MMA au Cameroun par exemple Un combat Un combat au Cameroun euh, Un combat UFC au Cameroun Combat UFC, je ne sais pas, je ne peux pas mettre ma main au feu sur ça parce que euh, ayant discuté quelques fois avec l'UFC, euh, leur engagement n'était pas très rassurant euh, à ce sujet, mais je suis persuadé qu'un jour il y aura un grand combat au, euh, au Cameroun et en Afrique. 
que pour les Camerounais et pour les Africains parce qu'il est, est, euh, est impossible, il est inadmissible que les, le Cameroun ait trois champions à l'UFC et l'Afrique ait trois champions à l'UFC et ne mérite pas avoir des, des événements de grande envergure. Merci. Thank you guys.